Hi all, Lee Veras here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. <laughs> Today I'm doing something a little different for me. I'm going to look at a single image and try to examine my thought process in the act of creation before, during, and after the moment of capture. Uh, along the way, I'll cover some technical details around cropping and extending the canvas, but for the most part, this is about the creative process. Okay, so let's dig in. All right, so um, here's the image in question. This was uh, captured during our Neighborhoods of New York photo adventure. This is one was about two years ago. Uh, and at this, this one, um, we went to Central Park and... Uh, we were just leaving, actually. We'd spent the morning there photographing uh, um, all around in Central Park and uh, the Bow Bridge and all these, uh, these very cool, uh, iconic places. And as we were leaving to go to our next leg of our adventure, uh, I noticed these men sitting in, in, uh, on benches here. Um, they were just kind of glancing across an expanse of low shrubbery, and there were these guys, and they were... They were talking to each other, but they must have been strangers because they weren't sitting close to each other. And uh, I saw this scene. I had my infrared camera with me, and I just realized that this was going to be a great shot. So I quickly framed it up and waited for something to happen. Um, and when he made this gesture of opening his arms up like that, that's when I knew I had the shot. Now, throughout this process, of course, when I'm looking through the camera, this is not exactly what I'm seeing, but this is what I'm imagining because I'm now very familiar with uh, infrared and the post-processing and, you know, what it what I want it to look like, certainly. What it really looked like uh, was more like this. And I'll show you the very first shot, which I did right when I framed it up. So this is the way it looks to me in the camera. And I have to do uh, a custom white balance to green foliage to get it even close to this. Otherwise, it's just absurdly uh, bright magenta uh, and you can't really judge anything. So doing the custom white balance, this is as close as I can get it in camera to the way I want it. Uh, but at least now I can get a sense of the actual contrast of the scene. And I, I just love how the dark branches here and the dark benches and the dark figures all are displayed against this bright foliage, which is just reflecting a tremendous amount of infrared light. So, uh, you know, I saw this happening. I, I framed it up very quickly, and I, I realized it was kind of all about this conversation these men were having. But here in this first, you know, shot, my thought is really just, I'm going to try and frame this up and then just wait and see what I can capture out of this little encounter. Um, so I'm I remember thinking that I would just kind of keep that space between the men centered in the frame. And, uh, and then I just took another shot. They're just talking to each other, nothing too exciting happening. And literally on my third shot, this is what happened. And I was like, at this point I knew this was, this was cool. This was the shot. I got some interaction, uh, some gesture that mimics the, the branches of the trees and, I, I thought this was it, but I stuck around, you know, because you never know uh, until it's over. You don't know if there's another good shot waiting to happen here. Um, and this one's not too bad. The gentleman on the right is leaning in. Something's been said, but it's not clear uh, that the man, the man on the left is actually talking to him. I kind of lost a little bit of that here. And then, then this one's not bad, but the man on the right is turned away and there's the, the connection between the two men is not there anymore. Even though I like this single handed gesture, it's just not as, as complete as the other one. So at, at this point, the man on the right stood up and walked away and I, the, it was gone. Right. So I only had a very brief amount of time to capture the, the shot and it's this one for sure. Um, now, I'm just going to real quickly go through my process here for uh, post-processing and uh, we'll, we'll go into the develop module here. So 
the whole the whole thing about post processing in uh, infrared um, is it's it's a really good idea to get a custom lookup table which shifts the the relationship of the um, value of the sliders. So here, in order to get this closer to neutral, I would I would typically try to use the eyedropper and neutralize to the green leaves, and uh, not too bad here actually. Um, so sometimes you can get pretty close without a special lookup table, but other times you need uh, you need a lookup table. So let's let's uh, undo that last little uh, adjustment. And I, I normally uh, use this this one that I developed based on Rob Shea's uh, instruction. And uh, shout out to Rob, uh, always a good um, a good resource for all things infrared. Um, and I'll put some links. Uh, in the uh, description below the, the video here. So again, here with this, um, I'm getting a pretty good neutral. I usually use this lookup table because it gives me a little bit more uh, variety of, of tone and color. Uh, next, I would think, um, you know, we'll, we'll try clarity because um, the exposure is really pretty close to ideal here. So I'll try a little clarity, adds a, a little kind of local contrast, crisp up the the fine details that, uh, around the edges of the leaves using the texture slider. And then perhaps we'll open up the shadows a bit because that clarity move kind of puts some more dark contrast in there. And sometimes a little dehaze goes a long way as well. It adds a little more contrast. I'll open up the, the shadows completely and just put back the contrast with a little more of that dehaze. And now it's, it's, it's pretty much where I would like it. Perhaps a little bit of bring the whites up. I, I'm clipping some details here. If I turn on the little um, the highlight clipping indicator here, if I just click on that little triangle there, you can kind of see little tiny areas. I don't mind. I don't mind. I, I in fact I can probably tolerate a little more. That that brightens up the scene and gives it more of a feeling of the of the light coming into the scene. So I'll, I can accept that much. And now I've got the, the, the feeling that, that I wanted on this. Uh, now at this point, you know, it's, I've captured it. I was framing it the way I wanted, and I'm, but I'm kind of looking at this and thinking, you know, maybe they, they seem like they might be a little low uh, in the frame. So one of the things I like to do, sometimes I'll wait after I've captured everything and I've sort of pre-post-processed uh, it just to make it look right. And I'll, I'll leave it alone. I'll walk away and I'll, I won't come back to this for several days. Then when I come back, I'm a little fresher and I, I'm not as in love with the image as I was when I, when I initially worked on it. Um, I'll come back and I'll look at it and then start playing around with some maybe some cropping ideas. So I'll get the crop tool out. And you can see now I've got this uh, golden spiral uh, kind of crop overlay. You can change the overlays for this tool in, in, under the tools here, and you'll see uh, crop guide overlay, right? So usually I'm, I, I set it at thirds. That's my, my default. You can cycle through these crop overlays just by hitting the O key, O for overlay. And, you know, we get this grid, we get the, these triangles, uh, various different overlays, sort of uh, triangle overlay. And you can notice how these lines intersect with your subject. You know, we've got the, this little golden spiral is nicely uh, surrounding the guy on the right. Um, there's a tight grid. There's our thirds. This one, I, I use this most of the time, and everybody is pretty familiar with the rule of thirds. And it looks like these guys are lining up pretty much on those third lines, but they are a little low. They're right below those, those sort of PowerPoint intersections. So I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I need a little more foreground here. And um, unfortunately in Lightroom, you can't crop, you can't extend the crop out to extend the canvas. We have to do that in Photoshop. So we'll just bail on that crop for now. And, okay, so I wanted to take this into Photoshop, and that's what I did. I'll go, you know, 
um, edit in, and I always open it as a smart object um, so that Photoshop waits before it saves all those pixels to the disk. Uh, but we open this up, we're, we'll open it up in Photoshop, and here we are. And let's revisit the crop again. So I get the crop and uh, it, I get the lines as soon as I start indicating that I'm going to move it. So now I've got those third lines in there. And what I want to do, I want to, since they line up on the lines, I just want to pull this part down. Now, it, if, you, if you just start pulling it down, you can kind of get it so that the intersect lines line up. Now, I will, uh, I, there's a little trick here. The, one thing that I have, I've changed the default behavior of the crop tool. So let me, let me explain that. Um, by default, it's set up to maintain the aspect ratio. So if, if I pull down on this, it keeps the aspect ratio and just extends the, the canvas all around on the, the right, left, and the bottom. Okay, so in order to just violate the aspect ratio that's set up, I have to hold down the shift key when I do this, and then I can just pull this down, and I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna end up probably closer to a four by five kind of uh, aspect ratio here, but now I've got the, them squarely inside of those PowerPoints, and I think I, I, think I do need this much area um, extended. So Photoshop now has this ability uh, to expand using generative fill. So you, you set the, the default behavior of the crop tool is this transparent. So if you extend past the canvas, you'll just get transparency. Uh, instead, I'm going to select generative expand and will allow Photoshop to expand this area and it uses AI to do that. You can see here it's generating this, uh, the, the new expanded area, and you're going to get the familiar three choices here. Okay, so that's not, that's not bad. That's not bad. It looks very convincing. All, but all three of these, in fact, are, are pretty convincing. But let's zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in to 100%. Maybe we might zoom in a little further because one of the issues, and you can kind of see it here. Let's let's zoom in one more level. So you can see here there's a certain amount of grain and some sort of crispness in the in the in the grain. This is the noise that's inherent in the file. But as soon as you get to this area where it's been extended, it's all fuzzy. So this is something to be aware of. Now, we might be able to get away with this if I add some noise to it. Uh, we might be able to get away with it. And it's, it. It does make for an interesting foreground area, but it's all, it's just blurry compared to um, the original area here. So instead of doing this, and here's the little technical tip for today, I'm gonna bail on, on that. Let's go back to um, the full view here. And I'm going to use an old school uh, method of extending this foreground that I think will end up being better. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have to make sure that I'm uh, selecting the background layer here. I'm going to make a rectangular selection of this foreground area. And now I'm going to actually put that into a new layer. So we're going to jump this into a new layer. And the, the keyboard command for that is Command or Control J. Jumps it into a new layer. Right. So there's my uh, new layer. Okay. I have the new layer highlighted, and I'm going to just do a free transform. So uh, the keyboard command for that is Command or Control T for uh, free transform. And you can see we have the little handles on it. Now here's the the you know the old school trick here. I'm just going to extend this foreground area just by dragging. And again, I have to hold down the shift key in order to get that to be 
constrained so that it doesn't expand the aspect ratio. And I'm just stretching this like that, and, and we'll accept that. And now, of course, if we zoom in, since I'm using the full res area, I'm just extending it. The grain and the pattern, the sharpness are all the same. It's very consistent all the way across. So um, in this case, it was easier to just use this old school method of expanding that foreground area uh, and we get a better result. And it, now, you know, looking at this, I definitely like this aspect ratio better and it just feels more comfortable. We feel like the eye kind of moves into the scene. Whereas before, if we just look at how this, when we open this before, it just feels like they're a little low and they're starting to fall out of the bottom of the frame. So definitely uh, prefer this version. So that's kind of my, my process. Remember again, I, I, after I initially did the post-processing, I was more or less satisfied with it. I let it rest for a couple days. And then coming back to it, that's when I start to explore, well, can I make this better? And in this case, I think uh, expanding the canvas was the solution here. Um, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the show. And hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative explorations. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. Bye for now.